Vaisai, welcome to Nixa Fanafshi. I think this is our 11th uh, Chavura. We started a few months ago, Baruch Hashem. Every week we have a beautiful, wonderful guest that gets better and better, Baruch Hashem. I'd like to welcome Rabbi Gatli. There's just too much to say about him, so I hope you have heard a little bit about him. But the one major thing that he's involved in this great initiative the last few years where he started this program in Breslov called Latayo Betarusai, where he came up with an unbelievable concept where everybody in every Breslov community around the world is studying the same title, the same lesson of the simultaneously. So if you're in Eretz Yisrael and you come to New York or vice versa and you, you meet somebody on the plane, you can schmooze, sort of like a daft concept, but a little different. And he has a unique mahalach in learning the Rebbe Svarim, which he was makabal from his father, Adam Achashiv, Amtshe Shlemein, is a friend of Rebbe Shlemein Ma'aren, which we were excited to spend a lot of time with him, and we grew up. So with no further ado, Mati, please share with us a few words, and there it is, us on this one. We have the warm words. And I'm sorry, I just want to say that the uh, Shia is the Nishmas, the Isha, the Shiva, the Chanabha, the and also sponsored anonymously in honor of Reb Shai, Reb Boshe, Reb Shai, Reb Yutz, that was yesterday, so the whole week we're able to uh, right. get the Shpah Yitzhak. Huh? I got some garbage. So good evening and thank you for inviting me and having me here to speak. It's a big honor to speak to see the Shubrest of the Eden over here. I'm going to start from the end. I want to say what's the goal of this whole speech, of this whole gathering together. By the end of it, by the end of the thing, the goal is we should be able to have the capability to base Hashem open a coil over here of ten in the light, fourteen in the light that would be sitting every day and learning the safe for the Kutimaran. And if they would learn and they would learn how to learn the Sefer. They would be able to, expi- uh, to be mashpia on the whole sviva, on the whole shul, and everyone that wants to come in every day and have time to learn the Sefer Lakutim Aran, to have who to talk to, to share ideas. If you have a group of Yingalites sitting and learning the Torah, so there's a, there's a base that knows the Torah. So even if you're not someone that could come in and learn every day an hour, but whenever you come in, even if Shabbos you come in, so the raid, the talking is all about the Torah and the Kutamaran. You have who to hear an idea from the Torah, you have who to, with who to share ideas, to hear, to say. That's the goal by the, by, by the end of the day of this, uh, what I want to talk about is to come to the Matziv, that we, could, should, we should open a coil here, and uh, going around, me and my friend Nachman Fried, going around trying to open up in other places, over here in America, coils, we opened part of the places, and other places in Beit Hashem, it's gonna open up. If we're gonna have here, like in El show, which I'll explain later, we'll have at least a few coils, Borough Park, Williamsburg, Lakewood, Muncie, Another place will have coils of breast living the light sitting and learning the same Torah in the Kutamaran. It will be Mashpia on breast in America. It will become a different breast of no question about that. So that's the first thing. The second thing, by the end of the Drusha, the, what's, the, what's the message that I want to take out of what I'm going to talk about? I want to introduce to people who are not breast of to introduce to them the Sefer that's called Lekut Maran. To explain what this book is, what this Sefer is, what kind of amazing Sefer it is, to get people to be interested and to understand how important it is for this generation to learn this Sefer and to have a part in a chilek in the Sefer from Lekut Maran. So if I have to start off the, after, but I, if, I, if I could say something about this Sefer, this Sefer Lekut Maran is an amazing Sefer. The Sefer has medicine for the whole world. This Sefer could treat 
and help everybody, Befrat today, in these times, in this generation, the Sefer could challenge all the ideas and all the problems that we have. It just needs that people should sit down and learn the Sefer. So, who wrote this Sefer? This Sefer, the Kutu Maran. Everyone knows Rabbi Nachman. This is Rabbi Nachman's Torah. But actually, there's not a lot of people, even in Breslev, that know how, that know the Torah that's here. They know the Torah is from the Kutu Maran. Maybe a lot of people know how to say over certain shtiklach, ideas, central ideas that there are in the Kutu Maran. In every Torah, there's an idea, a basic idea usually, and we have a lot of people that know how to say over these central ideas, but really how to go in and to take out from this Sefer what every person could take out for himself for his life. We don't have this thing going on yet, but now it's becoming. It's happening, and we have thousands of people in the Tzishroh that are connected to this Sefer, learning it, and having a schaskis every day, and eights ideas, how to become closer to the Ebeshter through this Sefer. In other words, the world today knows a lot about Rab Nachman, but the world doesn't know about the Kuti Maran. Whatever we know, whatever the world knows today about Rab Nachman is based mostly on his sikhs, things that he said, like the world knows Ein Yush Boilem Klal, Kol Oilem Kulo Gesha Tzam Oid, Mitzvah Gdeliyaz B'Sim Chotomid, Nikudis Tevis, there are central ideas that people know about Breslev, and that's how Breslev is uh, accepted in the world. So part of the people like Breslev, part of the people don't like Breslev, there's a big snagdis that didn't start today, on Rab Nachman. So, even what we know actually is a very small part, a very small part of what Rab Nachman is all about. Because the main thing what Rab Nachman is all about is his Torah, his ideas. And the Torah is in this Sefer called Lakut Maran. So, what was Rab Nachman's idea about this Sefer Lakut Maran if he wrote this Sefer? and he wanted the Sefer to come out to the world, what did he want should happen with this Sefer? Rab Nachman said very big things about his Sefer, Lakut Maran, which could look a little <coughs> funny. Not, it's not easy to accept the things that he said about Lakut Maran, but the truth is that a lot of things that Rab Nachman said about himself and about his way could sound a little... Uh, it, it's hard to accept them. But now that we see the last 10 years that we see 60,000 people flying in for Rosh Hashanah to Oman, when that was, it's not a normal thing, that a tzaddik that lived 200 years ago should speak about his Rosh Hashanah and he should say things like, I got a matana from the Ebeshter, I got a Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is a matana from the Ebeshter, and whoever listens to me should come to Rosh Hashanah to me, when he had maybe in those times 200 chassidim, and all of a sudden you start seeing that Breslev and Rab Nachman is going around the world. People are connecting to Rab Nachman's ideas in different ways from all kinds of groups by the Haredisha people, modern people, Siddisha people, literature people. People are starting to connect to the ideas from Rab Nachman 200 years after he passed away. So it looks like he knew what he's talking about and he saw the future and he knew why he came to the world. Why is Neshama came to the world and what he has to do in the world? But whatever we know from Rab Nachman, any ideas that we have from him that we could even accept that these ideas are nitzrach for this door, and we understand why his Neshama came and what he has to give, and why it's so good to be connected to Rab Nachman, whatever we know is again, is a very small part from this, from his Torah, from his way. Because the main thing that he has to give over to the world, Refrat, the Kras, Bias Mashiach Tzitkenu Be'ezer Hashem, is in his Torah, it's in the Kutu Maran. And if the world 
would take itself to start learning the Sefer, it would change, it would change the world. Now, Rab Nachman said, let's speak about the Kutumaran, about this Sefer, what did Rab Nachman say about his Sefer? Rab Nachman said that when this Sefer, the Kutumaran, is going to be accepted in the world, in Yiddish, they say, comes the great of Mashiach. The generation can get ready for Mashiach. <coughs> when we'll see that the, that the world would accept my Sefer Lekut Moran, we should know we're going into Mashiach's times. He said another thing. He said, the difference between me and Mashiach is that to me, people don't listen. And to Mashiach, people will listen. Actually, what he's saying is that the ideas and the das that Mashiach is going to bring into the world is the same das that Rabbi Nachman is trying to bring into the world. But to him right now, we don't listen. But to Mashiach, we're going to listen. Which means that the ideas of Mashiach, the ideas of Geula, the das, the understanding that we're going to need to be able to, to make a Geula protis and a Geula Klolis, that's the das that is in this Sefer Lekuti Moran. The Rebbe also said, Rabbi Nachman said, that when Mashiach is going to come and he's going to talk Torah for Klal Yisrael, so he's going to say Torah and he's going to say, he's going to say, this idea that I'm talking about, so it's for sure that Rabbi Nachman, he believed, that his Torah, that's the Torah from Los Lova. So the question is, if I'm not a breast lover, I, I thought I'm a breast lover, we'll speak about that, but if I'm not a breast lover, how do we accept this idea and how could we connect to such a big thing and take a see that it's true that the Kutumran is so special? I'll start off, okay, now I'll go back. Stop, I introduced myself, I introduced myself. I want to just get to the goal, because last time I started Russia, I didn't want to say, okay, where, where, where are you going with this? So I just said the whole thing. I'm going with this is, I want to introduce the safe, and I want to be Mishachnea people, that it's Kedai to start learning the Lakut and to bring it into the world. So I'll start from the beginning. My name is Moti Gottlieb. Um, some people call me Motche, some people call me Reb Motche. It's time to... I'm getting upgrades, Rev Motch, Arav Motch, but I like my name, Moti Gottlieb. I was born over here in the States in Borough Park. I lived in Borough Park till 13 years old. I used to dive in from time to time in Breslau Vishul in Borough Park. Um, I didn't have an easy experience here when I was a boy in America. Life wasn't so easy, but they wish to help Lashem Yeshua. And by 12 years old, my mother actually came to live in Israel, and I came to live in Israel also. As I came to Israel as an American boy, I used to learn in Bobov and Borough Park. So they put me into a breast of yeshiva. Since my father was breastless, so they put me into a breast of yeshiva. But there were no Americans those times in breast of yeshiva. They were all Yerushalayim and Bochrim. I'm talking about if people know all kinds of Yishlaim and Breslovers, all the Breslovers, they were all my friends from Yeshiva, but they didn't speak English, they didn't have an honor. It was different. Israel wasn't like today. I mean, Yeshiva, no one used to wear pajamas. It was like, a, so pajamas was a, some modern thing. Just the pajamas, you wear, you have this intervesh, Lange intervesh, and everything was Yiddish and everything, but that's how I grew up. As an American boy, they put me to Breslov Yeshiva, and that's how I started knowing truly what Breslov is. The first night when I came to Breslov Yeshiva, one o'clock at night, they wake me up, they say chtsos. In Breslov is a thing of getting up chtsos. Chtsos, it says in Shulchan Aruch, the second seat of Shulchan Aruch, that every Jew has to get up to Yisrael Laila and to be mekoyin al chum beis amigdash, which today we say it's very hard, it's a very hard, high avoid for a person, person to go to sleep and get up in the middle of the night and to cry for the beis amigdash, but in Breslov, it's a concept to get up chutzos. I don't know how many people actually do it, but it, in, in the Dalit, in ideologit, it's something that has to be done. A wrestler has to have a shifa to live a lifestyle of going to sleep early and getting up chutzos laila. And the <coughs> Rav Nachman taught us that this avoid of getting chutzos laila is not avoid of a big tzaddikin. Just every it could have a connection getting up in the middle of the night and it should bother him that there's no Beis Amigdash. But anyways, in those days, that's what they used to do in Breslov Yeshiva. 
So when I was a boy of 12 years old, 12 o'clock, they woke me up, they slept me out of bed. They said, what are we doing? We fought and fell. They're going to have his body, just like the breast lovers and the fell. So they slept me out to some feld over there in, in, uh, in Bnei Brak. And I had this bocha explaining to me, I, I, was, I was 12 years old, explaining to me that his boy did this is about talking to the Abish in your language and expressing your feelings and you can talk to the Abish as a good friend. Just like a best, that's the idea of his boy did this, right? So that's how it started off, my lifestyle started off, getting up every night in the middle of the night and teaching, I used to have my place over there in the middle of, uh, the middle of, uh, Forest. A forest, a forest over there. There was like the tapuzim, right? The tapuzim. I had my, my spot every night. And Baruch Hashem, I, Baruch Hashem, I was zayich to have this experience to be able to start talking to the Ebrister and connecting. Yeah, free, to, hey, we forgot about the free oranges all week. We got free oranges. <laughs> yeah. So come on with the buckets. There was a gesher there, there was a gesher over there. I don't know if you could a gesher. So I had a place under the gesher, I had a stone that no one bothered me there. So anyways, I grew up in a breast of a yeshiva, and then I got married with an Israeli, an Israeli woman, Baruch Hashem, Eishas Chayel. I built a family. And lately, what's happening is that I'm starting to understand that whatever I thought about breast living, whatever I knew about breast living, how much I thought I'm breast living, and I truly thought that since my father's breast my grandfather was breast already, and I grew up in a Breslov Yeshiva, and I was in the man, I learned coils from Breslov, I grew up in Breslov Shul, in Meisharam, I thought that I know <coughs> what Rab Nachman is all about. I thought I know maybe more than other people, a lot of, we have a lot of Bali Chuvis in Breslov coming along, asking, trying to find out what Breslov is, and everyone has a different idea what Breslov is, so many ideas. So I thought that my idea about Rab Nachman is pretty, uh, pretty stable. You know, I have, I have uh, Mauritius already, I'm not just I'm coming out from nowhere, I know what Breslau is about. But I want to tell you people that a few years ago, I started learning Taka, this say for Lakuta Maran. And I understood that I know nothing about Rab Nachman. And if you want to know about Rab Nachman, and you want to connect him, and you want to have a Kesha with him, and you want Rab Nachman actually to be your Rebbe, not just to say I have a Rebbe Rab Nachman, which could look very funny in the world because a Rebbe today is a living Rebbe, you have a Rebbe, if you're vision, it's a bells, or whatever it is, you have a living Rebbe, and you're saying you have a Rebbe that passed away 200 years ago, and you're saying, this is my Rebbe. So if you really want the Rebbe to be your Rebbe, and really guide you, and go along with you, and give you chiz, in Yiddishkeit, in Avodah Hashem, you want to have this kind of connection, the way to talk, and to have a dialogue with Rab Nachman, is when you sit and learn his Torah. Because when you talk, you learn his Torah the way you, learn, you have to learn the Torah, so the Rebbe talks to you. That's how he talks to you every day, and that's how he gives you everyday guidance and aids He gives you medicine for any problems that come along. But the way is, the true way, the true connection to have with Rab Nachman, if you want to really, if you want to have like your own private rabbi, Rab Nachman Breslev, you can have him. And he's the most living Rebbe in the world. Rab Nachman lives. You could feel how he lives. It doesn't, you could have Rebbe's walking around, going around, saying ideas, having thousands of chassidim. They're not living in no way the way Rab Nachman is living. Rab Nachman lives in his Torah, and Rab Nachman brought down this Torah for this generation to be able to speak to every Yiddish Jew, to speak to every Jew in his way, in his language, and the Torah that he brought down comes from such a high place that the words, the oasis, that there are in his Torahs are made in a way that everyone could understand and take and find themselves in the Torah. One time someone came to the Rebbe, Rabbi Nachman, and he said to him that a lot of people say that it's hard for him to learn his Torah because his Torah is very deep. So they don't find it. It's very deep. It's like, it's deep, good, but I can't learn the Torah. So Rabbi Nachman said, whoever says something like that is Apicurus. Because every Yid could find himself and understand my Torah. So why is it, actually, that this Sefer, the Kutu Maran, is a Sefer that people actually, for now, don't learn so much? Because... When you look at it, Taka, when you open a Torah in the Kutumaran, and the Kutumaran is Torah, Torah Aleph, Torah Beis, Torah Gimel, 
When you open up a Torah, you want to start learning the Torah, most of the Torahs look hard to understand. So right away you get like a feeling like, I don't know what's going on here. And this, this Sefer, this Torah is probably for people that know how to learn a lot. Big Talmud Chachomim. Maybe people that know a lot of Chassidus. Maybe people that know a lot of Kabbalah. You know, if you know Kabbalah, so you know what we're talking about. As a simple Pashtayid, maybe I can't connect to the words. But it's not true. And how do I know it's not true? Because I started a movement in Eretz Yisrael called the Tal B'Tayrosi. I started it off with 13 Goliath of Koil in Beitar. When we started to learn the Kutumran, the idea was that we learn every day an hour a Torah and the Kutumran, the same Torah. We learned the first Torah for a month. A month, every day an hour. It was a small Torah. And after a month, the Goliath came, they said that it's like after a month, you want to change, you want to go over to the next Torah, because they actually learned what they have to learn. And uh, what they understood, they understood. And the certain things they don't understand, then probably you can't understand more. So let's change the Torah. Well, now, after five years from this curl when I started it off, you glide are learning one Torah to Lakut around for half a year. And they don't get bored, and they don't say we want to change the Torah. And whenever we want to change the Torah attack, because we want the whole breast to go along, and a lot of people want to join, and you can't join it only if you start a new Torah. So every time it's so hard for them, to stop learning the Torah, they get so connected to Rab Nachman's idea, to what he's saying. Everyone in such a different way that it's so hard to leave and to go over to another Torah. But I don't have one koil like this today, like I started in Beitah. Today, Baruch Hashem, the Tal B'Tirosay has 13 koils around the whole Eretz Yisrael. We're talking about Yerushalayim, B'nai Brak, B'Nai Shemesh, Beitar, Brachfeld. Haryona, Chevroin I have by the Mitnachlim. And I, I don't really remember all the names, but it's, it's, it's growing and growing. That's about the Yungalayat. And all the yeshivas today, we have all the yeshivas. The, the biggest yeshivas in Yerushalayim, Chesidish yeshivas. We have groups of Bochum, Chesidish Bochum, sitting and learning the Torah from the Rebbe, with the Mordekai Geshmak, understanding the Torah of the Rebbe. They want to learn it, they have a Geshmak, and it's changing their lives. I have every day people coming over to me in Eretz Yisrael. I go around, I say a shir here, I say a shir there. I meet the people, and people are mamish excited and saying, why didn't we do this before? It's changing their lives. It's changing Breslov. In Eretz Yisrael, to have a Breslov shul that you can walk in Shabbos, and to see 20 people, 30 people, standing and talking together about the same Torah and the Quran, the same idea. Instead of talking politics or other kind of shtusim vavolim, which is in every community we have this, this kind of problem, Lashnara, Machloikas and everything. But all of a sudden, wrestle of them love each other together with the Rebbe together. We have what to talk about. And everyone can have a personal connection with the Rebbe which is a little different than the way I grew up in Breslau, which meant that to be able to have a connection to the Rebbe, I have to go through a certain source, which means like we have mashpim, right? Which we have to have mashpim talk. And we have to get the first uh, influence about the Rebbe, about what Breslau is about. We have to get it through somebody. But we can't be in a matzah that whatever I have with Rabbi Nachman is always in a way like I can't have my personal connection with him. I can't really understand this Torah. I can't learn with Rav Nachman or Chavrusa, sit down with Rav Nachman and tell Rav Nachman, I want to learn, I want you to be my Rebbe. Please help me in my situation, in my world. Tell me what you have for me. I have to always go listen to somebody else. The power of someone having the capability to sit down himself and open a Torah of the Moran and be able to understand what Rav Nachman is saying, that you have a Rebbe every day. I want to say something about what Rav Nachman, how Rav Nachman described his Torah. Rav Nachman said, every Torah of mine, the Kutum Aran, is like a beautiful palace. It's a Sikh in Chaim Aran, and also in every Akdom of the Kutum Aran, you have a part of the Sikha. Every Torah of the Kutum Aran is like a beautiful palace that you walk in. There are Hecholois, Chadorim, Chaloinois, it's like, I, I never visit actually such a beautiful palace. I mean, so I don't know, uh, but it, it sounds very interesting if there was such a palace that you walk in and you have hecholos. How do you say hecholos in English? Parcels. Huh? 
Halls, right? Beautiful halls. And they have small rooms. Every hall opens up. That's what I'm asking. Every hall opens up to another small room, a few rooms. And you keep on going, and there's the first floor, and there's the second floor. And you walk around this palace, and you get amazed. You get amazed, Ram Nachman says, by the... Everything is sitting perfect. There is no word, Ram Nachman said, there, in my Torah, there's no extra word that's not, doesn't have to be there. It's like, I said the idea, but you could say it differently. The way, the words I use, every word that I use, Ram Nachman said, is meduyuk b'mido b'mishkul gadol. And when you walk in such a palace and you're able to always understand how the palace is set up so right, how the halls are sitting the way they're supposed to be, and every hall, the way it opens up to different rooms, and every hall opens up also the same way, and the same idea keeps on coming back in different ways and different versions. And even though it is a big difference between every hall to a different hall, but they're all in some way connected to each other, that's amazing if you see such a kind of palace. Rab Nachman says, a Torah of mine in Lakuta Moran is like this palace because in Lakuta Moran, what Rab Nachman does is he takes ideas and he connects them together. Whoever learned the Torah in Lakuta Moran could see. Rab Nachman starts with one idea. He could start talking about Ahava Hashem. He talks about it, and then all of a sudden he goes over and he talks about, he could talk about mitzvah tzitzis, and then he could go with the third idea and talk about something that's called anova. He talks about beautiful ideas from Yiddishkeit, from Torah, and then he connects them all together, and he shows you how you could live in one idea, you could have so many ideas inside, and how he shows you how it's very relevant for your personal life, Rab Nachman's Torah is not a Torah that you just, you listen to it, you hear it. Like if I learn a sugi in Shas, if I learn a sugi in Shas, Shor Shonog HaSaporo. Shor Shonog HaSaporo, I could learn it very much beyond. I could live it. But when I finished learning the sugi, it doesn't have to, it wouldn't have always the effect that right away after that, when I'm sitting down to eat or plate a food, that I would see how the, the sugi of Shor Shonog HaSaporo is relevant for my life. I could think about the sugi because I'm still, I want to have a part in Torah. But it should be relevant. Shosh Nog Zapporah, Shosh Nog And a lot of Dina Torah are not relevant for today. Only when the Zman Beis Amigdosh. The Torah of Rav Nachman is a Torah that when you learn it, you, he takes you on a journey. You start learning the Torah and all of a sudden you, you start being amazed by the ideas. You start thinking. You start asking. You start talking to the Rebbe. And then all of a sudden you start feeling that Rab Nachman is taking you and guiding you and changing you. I had a phone call yesterday. I said a shear somewhere. I said a shear somewhere in, uh, where was the shear? In, oh, Lakewood. So a very a nice guy, a Belza guy that just got to New Breslau. And he came to the shear. He used bells. He had, Bells was like far from Breslau. They have no idea about Breslau. And uh, he said, I, I liked his shit and everything, but you forgot, he told me his, his, his story, how he got to Breslau. And he said, you forgot to say one thing when you spoke about the Kutunaran. The difference between the Kutunaran and other Chesidish as far as is that when you learn a certain Sefer, you learn about a certain Avoida. A certain Avoida, how to serve the Abishnu with this kind of thinking, this kind of Das. But then you have to do that for you. Like if I have a safer talk about what's the mile from Anova. So Anova, you have to do the job and you have to start working on yourself and uh, to try to be an honor. He says, what's interesting about the Kutum Rana, he's saying it from his personal experience in life, how he became wrestler is that I didn't do anything. I was just sat down to learn the Kutum Rana, and all of a sudden, Allah <laughs> started changing me. I, my life started changing only through learning. And he was learning the Torah, a very famous Torah, when we started, he got to this Torah through our project that we was learning in Eretz Yisrael, a Torah called Reish Ayin Zayin, a very interesting Torah, which the idea of the Torah is that you have to accept, you have to accept if people judge you, if you're more, the Rebbe brings the Pasuk in that Torah, v'nafshi ka'ofa la you have to know how to accept that if people step on you, 
or they do things that are against you, not to fight them back, just to accept, and through accepting this thing, Rabbi Nachman explains to what kind of a high spirit you could get and gain by just not saying anything and accepting it. So we were learning that Torah. And he sat down to learn the Torah as a Belza. That was interesting to see the Torah for Rab Nachman. And he's a person, the way he described himself, and then I heard from other people, he, he, he doesn't, if someone tells him something, he answers. He's a, he's a fighter. He's a fighter. He knows how to answer. I mean, like he said, if someone on the road tries to beep him on the road, he knocks him off the road. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fighter. And he started learning the Torah, and all of a sudden, he started becoming like Edel. He said, I don't know. I stopped answering people, fighting with people. And he didn't do any kind of special avoid it. Just the Torah of the Rebbe changed him. So he told me, why don't we speak about that? And I said, you're so right. It's so true. That once you put your head into a Torah of the Kutamaran, chutz from the, the idea that when your head is in a Torah of the Kutamaran, so you actually say that your head should be a whole day in a Saga Salikus. To be able to live a Saga Salikus, when I say the word a Saga Salikus, I hope everyone knows what the word is. Uh, you heard the word, but what it is actually, it could sound a lot of times that a Saga Salikus is for big, uh, big tzaddikim. Saga Salikus, I want to be a Elochid, I want to dive in Shafas, Milcha Mayrev. Be a shame to mitzvahs, maybe be better not talk a lot of not talk lashon hara bechalal, makpid al kalosh bechamura. There's a lot of levels, but when you tell a person the level, you want to live a saga salikus. That's like something I'm not there, you know. Let's be. If you learn lekuta maran, Rab Nachman shows you how your life, the way your in your situation is, you could connect every second to saga salikus. And you actually simple avoid this Hashem that you're doing, what it what it does, he explains it to you in the words of Kabbalah, but now you understand Kabbalah. Instead of saying idea of Kabbalah and telling you that Chakras is Chokhma and Mincha is Bina, and telling you, okay, it's good, you can hear, but you don't really understand what's going on. When you start learning the Torah from the Rebbe, so you start living Asoga Salikus, you understand Asoga Salikus. Oh, this still got going here. If you see the oil in the stocks, yeah, you give, give me, give, no, no, give me like two minutes before. Show me like this with the hand two minutes before. I'll know when to cut. <coughs> okay, good. The way to learn the Kutumran, which we have to understand, which is very important if someone wants to start learning it, and that's actually what we want to try to bring in through a coil when we have a coil in the light. So you sit down every day and hour so you could teach something in a way that you could tackle learn. The way to learn Lakutim Aran, there's a sefer called Bira Lakutim, a sefer that wrote Rabbi Vrom, Rabbi Nachman. He wrote about Lakutim Aran and he wrote 18 Kalolim had to learn because tackle Lakutim Aran could be hard to learn. He wrote 18 Kalolim. But the main Kalal that he writes himself, that that's the Kalal had to learn Lakutim Aran, and all the Kalolim around this Kalal is called Minei Ubei. Minei Ubei means, if you want to understand the idea in the Torah, you understand it from the Torah itself. It doesn't mean you have to have a certain hagdomis or ideas before. You have to know Kabbalah, you have to know Chassidus to understand what Rab Nachman is talking about. Rab Nachman explains himself for every person in the Torah itself. If you want to understand the Torah, you have to find the idea and the explanation and the connection to everything from the Torah itself. <laughs> like, like I said before, Rabbi Nachman could start an idea and talking about Ahava Hashem, then go over to Mitzvah Tzitzis, and then go over to Shiloh HaKen, and then go over to Anova. And a lot of times you don't really understand so much what is he explaining about Anova, even though he tries to explain it. But if you go further and you see how he explains a second idea, you can understand that he's trying to show you the same way I'm explaining this idea, that's the same way this idea works. And that's how he connects the dots together. And then they all show up together and they become amazing. So David should help, Bezer Hashem, that we should have a tzlocha together. Rav Tzaitlin, and Rav Lichter and Nachbar Free together. We should have success, Bezer Hashem, to open up over here, Koil to start learning the Torah from Rab Nachman. And no question about it, that it would change the atmosphere for them. They would have a murder tell us in their life. It would change the atmosphere in the whole 
Kehill and the whole shul, people just become more spiritual. That's the, that, that's what happens. And another thing, another tip that I could say before we start this thing, which is very important for everyone personally. If you want to understand what Rab Nachman is saying in Lekutu Maran, Rab Nachman said that my Torahs are Gdomois Chadoshes Legam. That means it's Hadis Agdomis. Introduction. Rab Nachman is saying, I'm not trying to explain you something the way other tzaddikim explained it. I have something new to say to the world, something new that the generation needs. I'm explaining certain ideas that you heard a thousand times. Like if I speak about a Havas Hashem, everyone has an idea what a Havas Hashem is. A little different always, but we have an idea, a basic idea what a Havas Hashem is. We know Havas Hashem is to like the Eivishter, and we have a lot of ideas and chassidus about Havas Hashem. Everyone grew up in a different place, in his house, from his Magachir, from his Rebbe. What a Havas Hashem is about. But Rabbi Nachman wants to teach you a new kind of idea about a Havas Hashem. It's a new idea. Which means if you understand this idea, you can understand other ideas also better. But this idea is a new idea. So if you want to learn the Kutum Ram, one of the problems that could very much bother is when you try to put your ideas into Rab Nachman. And that's actually happening today a lot by a lot of people that they try to put in their hakdomas, their ideas, their personal ideas, and say, this is what Rab Nachman means. Rab Nachman tells you, if you want to learn with me, don't put it, don't bring me your ideas. You want to sit, you be a Talmud. The Talmud means I want to teach you something. You have to be able to listen. You have to look. You have to read everything slowly, <coughs> read the words, think about it. And when you have a question which is very, <coughs> very shchiach, when we learn the around that you, right away we start learning, you have a question, one second, I don't understand the right. Rebbe says an idea, he brings a Pusik, I don't understand it so much. So you think you have a problem because you don't know how to learn so good, so probably that's why it doesn't make sense to write. No. It's true, it's not supposed to make sense. Rabbi Nachman knew it doesn't make sense. He wants you to ask. If you ask and you don't lie to yourself and try to say, like a lot of times we learn, you learn it like you're saying something, you're saying Tehillim. And you make, you're trying to tell yourself, I understand. If you don't understand, Rabbi Nachman wants you to write down and say, I don't understand. Because Rabbi Nachman wants to explain himself later, like we said, the Torah is one is connected with the other. Minei Bay. And if you don't recognize that you have a question, you won't see how he's answering your question later. So the way to learn the Kutumran is to ask questions. And I bring always the story, and I'll be Messiah with this. The Rebbe, one of the traders, Rabbi Nachman said, he had a Talmud, it was called Rabbi Aaron the Rav. He gave Rabbi Aaron the Rav one of his Torahs, and he said, learn the Torah and ask a question. That's what he said, Rabbi. ask a question, and then be yourself miyashiv, and say a Teretz. Now, it's a funny kind of story because what kind of a Rebbe that takes, writes a Sefer, asks, tells someone to learn the Sefer and ask a question. If, if Rabbi Chaim Brisker wrote a, wrote a Sefer, Rabbi Shmuel Salanta wrote a Sefer, whoever wrote a Sefer wants you to learn and understand. He doesn't need you to ask questions. But Rabbi Nachman was trying to tell us that the way to learn the Kutu Moran, which is a very, very deep Sefer, Eino Hanami, is just to sit down and to ask and to, to, to be sure what you don't understand. And then you start understanding that how, what you don't understand is so deep. It's right. It's hard to, in the beginning, there's certain, a lot of things that we don't understand. Not just in the Torah from Nachman. A lot of things in life that we don't understand. We don't understand a lot of things in Ruchnis, what's going on. We don't really know what it means as Soga Salikus. But when you open up, with a, when, when you ask a question, you're able to accept an answer. How much the question is big a lot of times, so the answer sits a lot better. So the way to learn the Kutumran is not to put in your ideas into Rab Nachman. The, the idea is to listen, and when you have something you don't understand, you write it down, you don't understand, and you keep on going further and further. And that's how a Torah, one turn of the Kutumran, you could learn, not for here for a year, and I don't think we're gonna learn a Torah here more than a few months, but you can learn a Torah for a few years. You can learn a Torah and be amazed every day, again and again, how deep and how sweet and how much ideas of Ruchnius could come out of one Torah in Lekut Moran. Rav Nachman said that whoever's going to learn my Sefer could become a Baal Tshuva Gomer. Whoever's going to learn my Sefer, if you learn my Sefer, you could become a Baal Tshuva Gomer. And the way I see it today is that Rab Nachman, if you sit down and learn a safe, Rab Nachman takes you, he picks you up from where you are, and Rab Nachman can take you out. When Rab Nachman said that I could take out a person from Shreel Tachtis, 
he could prove it. Rab Nachman could take out any person, any problem, that he, any spiritual problem that he has, any ruchni is the problem that he has. If it's an addiction or any other kind of chaloyim roim that are going around today, taivus, whatever is going around in this world, if you're ready to sit down, Rab Nachman, Rab Nachman, I want to accept you as my rebbe, and I want to hear your Torah, and I want to hear what you have to say to me. Rab Nachman will give you medicine, help, guidance. You're just going to start loving him. And he's going to be talking to you a whole time. And I'm telling you from my experience, and uh, I have friends. One of them is sitting here. I'm not going to say his name, which he's learned the Kutumran. He says, listen, Moti, I dream by night. The Kutumran, he says. I dream. I, have, I learn, and I have questions, and I'm trying to connect the dots. And it's amazing. It's, 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 intellectually, there's not such a book that was written in the world. I'm, I'm, I learn. I, I learned other Sfarim. I'm not trying to take down any other safe. There is not a, a safe in the world that has so much chokhmah and is so interesting and so amazing. I have a, a person that I know, a literature, a big literature Rosh Yeshiva. He knows how to learn. A Amkin in Torah, a shtick of Talmud from Moshe Shapiro, ever heard about him. And I introduced him to the Kutumaran, and uh, you know, in the beginning he was like, yeah, yeah, I heard about it, Rab Nachman Kutumaran. But I, I actioned it. I said, I want to learn with you now. We're sitting down to Honor of one turn of the Kutumaran. You have to try it out once. We sat down, and in the beginning it was hard because he started learning the Kutumaran, and like I said, he started putting in his ideas. Whatever Rab Nachman says, says, yeah, that's what it says over here. It says in the morale, that's like, Rab Nachman doesn't have anything new to tell me. I know, he's a big Talmud Chofim. I said, no, no, you, now two hours, it's my time. You don't know anything. Whatever Rab Nachman is saying, it's like olive base for you. You already accept it for two hours. Let's listen to what Rab Nachman is saying. We learned for two hours. Today, this person calls me up and he says, listen, I can't explain it. Whenever I'm learning a Torah on the Kutumran, and whenever I open the Torah, I see something new. The same words that are written, it's like, how could a human being create such a text? It's not menschlich. And maybe I look like a Baldemian saying it, but if you try it out, if you sit down and you learn a Torah, it's, it's hard. You can make, I, I'm going to be back here probably another month or two because I'm saying this year. And if so, I want to see someone coming over to me and tell him, listen, I tried out what you said, Mati. I sat down. I learned the Torah in the Kutumaran. I had patience. I asked. I talked. And I want to see what's amazing here. I, there's not such a matter. I'm sure that when I come back, Be'ez HaShem, or if I don't come back, whatever it is, whoever's going to touch this Sefer and take this Sefer and start learning the Sefer of the Maran, it's going to change his life. He's going to be amazed by how much knowledge and Chochmah. And what's interesting about the Kutumran, this will be Messiah. What's interesting, very interesting about the Sefer of the which such a thing can't happen only if it's really Torah that's coming from such a high place, that when you learn the Torah, it's not just Chochmah. It's not like Others firm that it's intellectuality. I'm learning something. I'm thinking about it. It's spiritually. He takes your heart. He takes your nefesh. Every idea in the Maran, every idea is in the head, in the heart. And you start becoming an emiss. I'll be Messiah. Rabbi Nachman said, give me your heart and I'll take you. You just have to give me your heart and I'll take you and I'll guide you in a new way. Everyone could try it out. Everyone could have a connection to Rab Nachman. If you sit down and you learn this Torah with the Emuna, with the true Emuna that you have in Rab Nachman, the Rab Nachman, like he said, every word of mine is Meduyik, Bemidu Mishku Godu. Don't learn me Stam. Don't, don't Zug Stam the Torah. Sit down with me, learn slowly. If you believe in me, you sit and learn with me, you let me. Be'ez Hashem, the Rebbe takes you from where you are and he brings you up to be the biggest tzaddik Be'ez Hashem is Baruch. Thank you very much. Yes. 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 We'll just start the turn for one minute, okay? Let's start the turn for one minute. Let's give it one minute. Yeah, it's a very good to have Be'ez Hashem. Everyone can continue further. It's a journey. This turn is a journey. Turn of the first turn. Turn of it's a journey. We start with Shkhoi Deshir. We start with Shkhoi Deshir. All the curls, all the bottom, yeah. everyone starts to go the And uh, we're we going with this turn for a few months. So there's no way to rush. If you start learning the turn and you feel that you don't understand it, no pressure. 
Go to the next part. You go to the next part. You learn the next part. You do understand. And then you start again. You start again. You learn it again and again to understand. Now it's happening now. I'm going to start. The Rebbe brings the Chazal. Oh, a busy with Max. We're saying it so many times. I was freezing. We get to meet. Maybe I'm the only one called here? No, the one called. Let's do it fast. Let's do it fast. Let's do it fast just to have this chus to start the Torah. Yeah, good. Just a few, few, few words. The Rebbe Chofei Loshu Rabbeinu Shchen LeRoch. This is Mamish. These words are the Loshu the way the Rebbe Ramnach said the Torah was written down. Mamish. There's certain Torahs that that Rab Nossin remembered what Rab Nachman said. He wrote it down. Then Rab Nachman went over it and he fixed it up. But there's certain Torahs that are mamish the Loshu from the Rebbe Rab Nachman said. So the Rebbe brings a Chazal. I'm not going to Chazal. Let's start the Torah Sif Al. So the people then understood it by him saying it. No. I don't think, I, I think everyone that sat by, the, first of all, Rab, Rab Nossin describes that. How, did, how was it when Rab said Torah? He said that every Torah Rab said, the Rebbe used to sit a few hours, that's what Rab Nossin describes. And he was, his body was shivering. A few hours, before he opened his mouth and started saying Torah. So we have to understand from where this Torah is coming. This is not a, uh, anyways. See, Fowler, the Rebbe starts like this. Kitzorich kol odom, Every person has to take himself out of the Medama and go up to Seichel. Now these words itself as a beginning. What does it mean to go out of Medama? What's Medama? And what does it mean to go up to Seichel? What's Seichel? All these ideas, if you go along with the Torah, you're going to see how Rabbi Nachman explains you what Medama is and what Seichel is. And the Rebbe says, right, but when a person doesn't do this thing, that he takes himself out of the Madama and he goes up to the Seichel, he goes after the Madama, Zepchina Shrira slave. Shrira slave, how would I explain it in English, Nachman? Shrira slave. What was the word for Shrira slave? Huh? Okay, unless you create Shrira slave is like a heart that is a heart, it's like a stone. Right, right. The Rebbe says, That's the Shomer that was in the Beis Hamikdash. That through the Shomer, the stone used to, used to break itself. We're going to stop over here, okay? Just want to start the idea. But the whole Torah over here, actually, is going to go back. Huh? A team, what's it? I know, I know. It's hard to get some attention. I'll tell you something. Let me just want to defend it. When you start this Torah, you have to go this in the three sentences that he said there is so much to understand it that if he starts I'm telling you we do it but then we're sitting here for an hour and a half two hours this is not a five minute thing he did it because he, he said start the Torah so he ran into the Torah I, I can just say like this in the first if you look at the words the pastures the first feeling is Madam is like the Loshan from Dimyan it's not the seichel. Seichel is seichel, and medama is like uh, dimian. Imagination. Right, imagination, or we had another word for it. Uh, illusion. Illusion, right. And that's an idea that you could say it's very, I understand the idea, like to be a more spiritual person, to be a more elegant person. It's more to live with seichel, with das, than to live in, in all the shtus and vavolan that we have going on. That's illusions, everything's illusion. But the truth is that that's also true. But if you want to know what Seichel is, when the Rebbe says you have to go out of the Madama and go up to Seichel, if you're going to say, oh, Seichel, I remember, I learned once uh, Maral, I learned about Seichel. So let me open up Maral now, Liam, what's Seichel? What's Seichel? Oh, Seichel, this Chochmah, this Bina, this Seichel. Let, let me open up first, get myself ready to understand the Rebbe now, what Seichel is. And Seichel is a simple thing, go out of the Madama, go up to the Seichel. But when you learn Torah Chafei, you'll understand the first time in your life what Seichel means. 
the way you never understood it before. Seichel is not the way you understand Seichel, it's a thing that you think. Seichel is a higher thing. You want to know from where Seichel comes? When, you want to know what you could do with Seichel? You want to know what, how every minute in your life has to do with this thing? When you get up in the morning, it has to do with this thing about going out of the Madame and going up to the Seichel? How it's relevant in the morning, how it's relevant in the afternoon? You want to know it? You learn Terech Hafei. If you learn Terech Hafei, you understand what a Madame is, you understand what a ter- what Seichel is, and you understand so many nice and beautiful ideas that we have in Terech Hafei. Be'ez HaShem, Shanasev and Atzliach. And if there's going to be a group sitting and learning, I promise next time Be'ez HaShem I'll come back. And I could say a Shein Lekutim Ran if everyone has time and I have this uh, good drink over here. All right? We could talk two, three hours. And it won't be boring. Believe me, if, if you know, if you know the Torah. If you know the Torah, you come, you could talk two, three hours and no one wants to get up. I'm telling you from my experience, Nachum is my friend. We get on the phone. He lives, I live in, in Etzishol, he's in America. He could call me one o'clock, late o'clock at night. He says, Mati, you know, we're learning this Torah. I want to just tell you an idea that I have. We're on the phone for an hour and a half. We can't stop talking. And it's interesting. He says, listen, I thought about this, I thought about that. We're going back and forth. This could go on for months. We're going on the way to here. It's all about the Torah that we're learning. So, I want to add something to what you said, that, 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 that it's, you, are, you start seeing it in your daily life everywhere you turn. It, if, you, you, if you start thinking about it, what did the Rebbe mean? Take me out of the Madama, elevate me to the Seichel. What is, like he said, what is the imagination? Where is the illusion coming from? Is all my Seichel, all my understanding coming from illusions? Is that where it all starts? The Rebbe says I have to go out of it. Is there something good about the Madama? Is the Rebbe trying to tell me that there's something in the Madama that I need to take out in order to get to the Seichel? And you start questioning everything. Is it two separate avoiders? Is there an avoid of taking me out of Madama? And then there's another avoid of going into the Seichel. And then the Rebbe goes on and says that the Seichel has different positions. The Seichel of Bekayach, where I got it, but I didn't act, I didn't execute, I didn't bring it into a pile, I didn't bring it into action. And then, then there's a Seichel Anikna. And then the Rebbe says that the last, the thing that, you know, we all live our whole lives because we want to get to a place that something is gonna stay from us. What do we live? We live our life to elevate ourselves in Ruchnias, that either in the afterlife or whatever's gonna remain of us on this world, our children, whatever remains on this world has, there's something that stays. And the Rebbe says, yeah, you wanna have a Kiyam forever, you wanna be part of Nitzchias, you wanna be part of this big universe that's here 5,782 years, there's a way. There's a way for you to live forever. And the Rebbe is starting to teach us. So now I'm questioning it and I'm asking, what, where, what, is, what does the Rebbe mean? Does he mean imagination? Does he mean illusions? What is there good about it? What is there negative about it? Imagination is a creative thing. Imagination also brings us to Taivas. We imagine the Taiva, we imagine the, that there's something, we're missing out on something. The Rebbe says, that's poison. We have to go away from that. But there's something sweet here. When we start learning it, I, I'm inviting everybody, everybody, anybody, and you could tell anybody that we're starting this koil here, Be'ez HaShem, uh, Rabbi, what's his name, ne- Nezri, was it, where you, you yeah, can, man, or man, there's man, a phone man. number that you could call, and you leave a message, I listen to the messages, I'll call back. We need to start living the culture and the cult and the life of the Rebbe. And the only way to do that is by learning and challenging him from a place of a muna, place of I believe, I see you're big, you're huge. You're 200 years ago in your little town in Breslau, you said something, and 200 years later, thousands of people Yidin from all different sects and Goyim, universities, the world is being touched by your, by your words, by what you said. There's a message here. There's a, there's, there's a life and a culture that you can live here. Like Mati said, we grew up in, as Breslov, but we don't even begin to understand who Rabbi Nachman was and what he was and how to really connect to him. 
Yes, we go to Oman, we say Tegna Koli, we say Harani Makasha, and we connect. But you know that you could connect, you, that's our way, I was thinking about it, that that's our way of taking Rab Nachman and pulling him into me. But what about me going into Rab Nachman? How do I become part of this, this movement, this spirituality on a level that he teaches me that, yeah, in 2022, with all the exposure of the world, of the imagination that's building technology and everything, there is a way for me to take all of that, be regular, and still be connected to the Abishta the same way Avram Avinu was connected, Yitzchak Avinu was connected, and Yaakov Avinu was connected. That's what the Rebbe is giving us. And that's just the header of what the Torah is. So I'm inviting everybody. Come join this movement. Come be part of this, this, this great tzaddik that, that, that thought about me. And he thought about you. And he thought about every individual. He saw everybody from the beginning of the Bria to the end of the Bria. And he said, yeah, even you. You think, yeah, you failed. Ah, everybody fails. Everybody has a Shol Tachtis. He talks about Shol Tachtis and everybody thinks it's only us. Everybody to themselves say, yeah, he meant me. He means everybody. Every single Jew has a place that's his Shol Tachtis. And he gives you remedies. He gives you prescriptions. And every Torah is its own prescription. So now we're starting Torah Chafei. And it's a challenging Torah, believe me. There are Torahs that talk to you easier. This is challenging. I started it and I get frustrated. And I close it, and then I open it again tomorrow. I start again. And I still don't know. I don't know what Bindam is, and I don't know what Seichel is. But let's do it together. Together, you're going to bring your idea of Seichel. You're, I'm going to bring my idea of Seichel. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get things. We're going to live it. You're going to see it in your life, in every relationship with your wife, with your children, with your grandchildren, if you have grandchildren, <laughs> with... And the most important thing, your relationship with God. How do I connect to you, Hashem? I get moments, I get moments, and I feel them, and then I get scared of them, and I run away from them. I want to stay with you. How do I stay with you? How do I hold it? How do I take the Rebbe from Rosh Hashanah and live with him in Sphere Zayma? How do I take the Rebbe in Pesach? How do I take the Rebbe not in Yontif and a regular Tuesday and a Wednesday? How do I take the Rebbe when I'm running to my tithes. How? There's a way. And the way is by learning the Torah. So I'm asking, come join this movement and let's get into Torah Chafei. Sunday night, we're starting a Torah here in this shul. Dafka in the shul, so it should be exposed to not just Breslau. Rab Nachman is bigger than just Breslau. Breslau is limited. Rab Nachman's unlimited. And you don't have to be uniform to be connected to Rav Nachman. It's not a certain uniform that everybody knows. So let's do it together and come join. Call that number or call Buddy or call Mati and let's do it. I, I'm a Shai of Belin When I'm, if I'm local, to come here once a week and to learn together as a Chaburo. And when Mati will come, I'll be able to pull him. You guys, you didn't even realize that he, he because he didn't talk about his ideas in the Torah. And he taught me and he inspired me to do this and I'm, I'm, I'm all in. So I'm asking you, don't go all in yet, but try. Come, go in and together we'll go all in. Bye, Lato. Subscribe. 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 Subscrib